Welcome back, everyone, to the Nerd Dose Radio Podcast, where you get your daily dose of nerd content. <laughs> I'm Zach, and I'm joined here today by my fellow classmate, co-host, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, <laughs> Kyle. How's yeah. it going, Kyle? Pretty good. It's been a long day. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a rough day. Today we had our uh, drug take back day. Mm -hmm. We both volunteered for for that. So National Drug Take Back Day mm -hmm. on, this, on the day of this filming and all that. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, we'll give back to the community where we can. Yeah, just get, you know, if you have unused drugs, this is a little plug. Hold on to it and, and go to your local police station to get rid of that stuff. Don't try to like keep it on there or like do any improper disposal of it. Try to Google like your local place to dispose of it correctly and. Go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they do a ton of drug take backs all over the community. Yeah. It's not just today, the one time of the year. Mm -hmm. They do them all the time. Exactly. But mm -hmm. we've had a lot of nerd content this week. Mm -hmm. We had the finale of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We got our first looks at Shang-Chi. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty much it. Anything from what else? I can think of, yeah. Yeah. That's um, important. I'm going to bring back what we kind of did last episode. What have you been watching, Kyle? Uh, well, I, what I've been watching, uh, obviously a bunch more animes. Um, I totally forgot to talk about this last time because this is one of my personal favorite animes is My Hero Academia. Uh, fifth season just came out a couple weeks ago. Um, so I've been watching the newer episodes that have been coming out. I you don't watch it live? I do watch it live. I just forgot to. I know today's oh. episode just came out today on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I still haven't, I was, we were, I was going to watch it, but then... We had to do that drug take back program and then I fell asleep because I was tired mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I'm here doing the podcast. So, but yeah, I love this show to death. I have I know a lot of people are like have mixed feelings with it because um, it's pretty really? much people think, well, I, all I remember is that people think that the fan base of this community, yeah, of this fan base is intense. It's intense. It's extreme. It is. And I understand why, but also stop because it's annoying because you know these are high schoolers essentially in this anime mm -hmm. and they're training to become superheroes people kind of overhype it sometimes yeah cause, yeah i heard the show was really good though i never heard anything bad from the show it's not bad it's really good i know right now it's kind of in my opinion kind of dwindling down a little bit but like I still love it to death. Bakugo Katsuki is like my favorite person in the, the show. The grenade. The, the grenade thing. A uh, little throwback. I actually used to dabble in the cosplay and go to anime conventions. I have seen it. It is hilarious. I know. It's <laughs> one of my undergrad thingies that I've done. So I've dressed up as Bakugo Kats as Katsuki Bakugo. I've had the grenades where it's like legit, like big as hell and stuff, where I had someone make it for me. I had the wig. I had the costume and all that. That was good old days. I really wish I had a 3D printer. That'd be cool. Because I've seen... I'm on 3D printing for TikTok. Mm -hmm. So I see all these cosplays. And they're just so cool. And then mm -hmm. I follow them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's just... Yeah, it's just awesome to see how much people, like, detail they put in 3D printers. Mm -hmm. Printing. And for what for what to make for the cosplays. So yeah. it's just badass. I it's never it. ending. You can create no, whatever really you is. want. I've seen one guy make like four Iron Man suits. Exactly. I think I saw him also. Yeah, yeah. and he's he does such a good job with the paint job and the mm -hmm. sanding and everything that it doesn't even look like plastic. Mm -hmm. So it's just mind blowing what people come up with. It's ridiculous. And like I've seen some of these like especially at the conventions, like people show off their work and it like it's amazing of what these people can mm -hmm. make. I even remember seeing um it was a collaboration with well what they did was they combined the EV evolutions from Pokemon mm -hmm. and they made them into like mecha suits or like Whoa. robot suits and it looked really dope. They had like LED lights in the eyes or color coordinated where it was like Vaporeon was the blue and it had like some water like elements in it, Flareon with the flames. It was just so dope what these people can create and it's like you, you mean creation cr creativity is never ending so mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want and like as long as you respect the art that's all i can say so i think i saw i saw godzilla and evangelion yeah figure kind of <laughs> crossed into it yeah and i thought that was pretty funny i mean hey like there's those things that people just like making and mm -hmm. like i i think i see something like that also um where they like i said combining mechas with like other genres I saw someone three D print a Godzilla, a Godzilla and made it into a lamp. Oh, Whoa, God. so cool! Mm -hmm. And the paint job was amazing. It didn't. Mm -hmm. It looked beautiful. Yeah. And it wasn't even that big either. So like the attention to detail was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. 
But I've been uh, I've been watching Shit's Creek. I'm on the final season. It's gonna be very sad when that show's over. So is my girlfriend, Cayman. She's gonna be very sad about that as well. <laughs> We've been loving watching that show. It's very heartwarming and wholesome. It's it's a good show in between our Grey's Anatomy break. <laughs> Grey's Anatomy. Because Grey's Anatomy is just all sadness. But yeah. this show is just happiness and it puts a good face to you. And then they're like they give you happy tears, you know? Mm-hmm. So and I started watching Demon Slayer. Yes. So Thank God you finally started it. Yep. I watched a few, a couple episodes last, a few days ago, and then I watched a bunch today. Very cool. Mm-hmm. I've been enjoying it. Loving the animation, loving the characters. The animation is crazy. Yeah. Like crazy good. Mm-hmm. Like like the point of view shots. Oh, are, those are fucking crazy, right? It just, it goes from 3D animation to like 2D animation. It's mm-hmm. just fucking crazy. Yeah. And I love that. Um, yeah, the movie just came out last week, so hopefully I grind it out. Maybe we could go see it together. Maybe. There'll be a future episode, our mm-hmm. thoughts on it. I gotta see, like, future, um, dates, like, when they're coming, because I feel like they're only restricted, but due to COVID, I'm hoping they can elongate it. Yeah. So, I I'll think have... the movies have been, because there hasn't been so many movies coming out, mm-hmm. I feel like they've been, like, Wonder Woman 84, I think, is still in theaters. Yeah, I think I saw that one time also. So, and I'm like, what I... the hell? But, and this was what the number one movie in Japan. It was the number one, like the was, highest grossing movie in Japan last year, right? Came I believe so, because yeah, I think it came out like in twenty twenty. Yeah, twenty twenty. And I f- believe I don't remember looking. I look. I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm kind of sure is that it was passing Spirited Away, and it passed the other very famous anime movie, Your Name. It passed those two box office like release and like selling dates or whatever. And they're now the number one for Demon Slayer, and it's freaking rid- ridiculous. Yeah, Spirited Away came out in like 2003, right? Yeah, still one of my favorites. I love that movie. Today. I remember watching that in like sixth grade when I was mm-hmm. like 12 years old. <laughs> By the way, don't ever show a, like a 12 year old this movie because they're just gonna think it's boring because mm-hmm. you have no idea what's going on, and you got the teachers who are like try to find every different arc or every different like aspect of storytelling Mm -hmm. they can't and you're just it's just overwhelming as a as a kid and you're like what am i watching i never knew you watched in the sixth grade huh yeah i need to rewatch it because i didn't really like it in sixth grade because again it's not like a regular movie where it's her beginning plot and then ending Mm -hmm. it's just all over the place yeah it's all over the place so Mm -hmm. it's as a kid yeah like i said it's overwhelming you don't know where it's going too stimulating yeah very much (laughs) Like, the guy eating people and then throwing it up at the end. Yeah, no face. Yeah, so, like, I was just like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> I love no face. He was so cute. They have, like, a little, like, thing that you can buy yeah, where it's, like, a coin. Uh, no face, there's, like, this little um coin, like, dispenser thingy you can buy where it's, like, him holding, like, a plate. And then you put a coin on it and he eats it. And, like, uh, so, like, it, in, it puts the coin inside the thing to store it and shit. Awesome. It's really cool. I even have, like, this, like, little cat one where it's, like, in a box you put the coin on it, it comes out, makes a noise, and then it grabs the coin and like drags it into the box itself. <laughs> we love that. Oh, we love little weird ass toys that just come out of it. Shang Chi trailer. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this movie. Yeah. Okay, so I saw what the toys, kind of like a little Lego set of what? The Funko Pops. No, th- no, they weren't Funkos. I think they had like a Lego set. Like the cover of the Lego set released. Oh, they just did? Oh, sure. No, not not just now. They did it like a couple months ago. So I kind of had an idea of what his costume was going to look like. Mm. And they had some interesting creatures on there as well. So I was, thought this movie was going to be very weird. Mm-hmm. And like they had a dragon, of course, on there. Why not? <laughs> but after seeing the trailer, I am very excited for this Oh, I'm film. so excited. <laughs> I am very pumped to see the Marvel, like... Kind of go back to a Kung Fu style movie. Because mm-hmm. you know for a fact, like like the shots in the forest, mm-hmm. like the bamboo forest, like you could tell straight up that's like going to be a full on... Kung Fu like thingy like that? Yeah. I'm like six, the old days. The old like Kung Fu movies like with Bruce Lee and all that. And back old uh, Jackie Chan when he yes. did all of his stuff also. I really... Jackie I, Chan is my favorite. Oh, like he's like my dad. I call him... <laughs> I I'm like I was kind of hoping like they put Jackie Chan in this movie. Is it oh, weird to say that? That would have been awesome. You know what I mean? That would be fucking amazing to add him in there. Like as a villain if he is. Mm-hmm. That would be fucking dope. Dude, Jackie Chan was like my favorite actor growing up. He's my favorite. I love Jackie Chan. I 
I always see, like, for some reason on Facebook, this is like, I know, psychoating, but, or tangent, but whenever I see, like, a freaking picture of him black and white, I always think, like, oh my god, please don't tell me he passed away, because, oh, like, god. it makes me sick. That's gonna be a sad day. I'm gonna have to, like, take a he's, personal day. He's, like, a singer, right? He did used to sing, yeah. yeah. He sang, um, I forgot. He was what a movie. pretty popular artist. He was. He also, he also um, sang the Chinese version of one of the Mulan songs. And that was a fun. I and I remember we were watching it. I kept listening to it when I was in work because we played Mulan, mm -hmm. and I always see Jackie Chan singing it. In back he in is the day, sixty-seven years old. Yeah, that means he was in his for late forties to early fifties when he filmed Rush Hour. I know <laughs> what the fuck. I love the Rush Hour movies, but anyways, getting back to um, Shang, Shang Chi. Um, I'm excited again. This is another. We're adding more Asian representation to our now to the Marvel universe. Um, having Simu Liu as the main character again for some reason Aquafina, which I'm like mixed review about, but like she's everywhere. She's everywhere, and I understand you, why. So there's a drama movie, a dramatic movie she stars in called The Farewell. Yes, have I've you seen, seen that? I watched a little bit of it, but I heard that's where like everyone was like, "Oh my god, she's an amazing actor." Yeah, she can act really well. The I know, actress. like, actress, yeah. I, I haven't seen it. I've seen a little bit of it because I know, like, that movie is about, like, her grandma or something yeah, like that, like, has cancer and, like, didn't want to tell anyone, but now she's trying to tell people or something like that. I do want to watch that one day. I just haven't had the time to. I think it's on Hulu. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think, I think it's that. a Hulu original, actually. I think it might be. I'll have to look into it later. But, yeah, I and, like, she was also in Raya and the Last Dragon, which was... That was a pretty good movie, <laughs> so... It was alright. I just think, like, for her, it's just weird seeing her in, like... Because all I can remember first seeing her was in Crazy Rich Asians. And I can only assume, like, she's just the, the comedic relief, if that makes sense. She was in uh, Ocean's 8. She was in Ocean's 8, yeah. yeah Kamen remembers her from that movie the most. Oh she, for some reason, Kamen loves Ocean's 8, which is my girlfriend. And that movie is very interesting it's a very i mean it's nice because that is like another like woman empowerment movie i guess and also is like Just a play off of oceans 11 with um george clooney and brad pitt right? yeah, yeah okay those two yeah this wasn't good anyways shang chi is pretty much doing exactly what kind of like what black panther did mm -hmm. having their own movie about but this time asian representation yes which we love i love it but i don't know if you remember but there was this one scene in shang chi this shang chi trailer where you see like people fighting and then you see like giant li uh, lions do you remember that oh shoot i mm, it was maybe for like a quick two three second clip mm -hmm. but that clip alone just gave me mad Black Panther vibes because at the end of Black Panther, they mm -hmm. had people fighting with giant rhinos. Oh. So I was like, what? Are they just redoing this? Because I, I was a little confused. I'm very curious to know what his powers, if he has any. I think he's got powers relating to the water because mm -hmm. I think there was a Funko Pop release where he like where he's doing a kick and like yeah. water's falling him. Mm -hmm. So, and then you saw water, like, floating in the trailer around him. Yeah. But in the comics, when he was originally introduced, he was just, like, a very skilled martial artist. Mm -hmm. And then I think in one of the rebirths, I don't think it's called Rebirth, anyway, I think that's DC. Anyways, when they redid his character mm -hmm. in the Marvel comics, he had the ability to multiply. Oh, I think I remember Great clones that. to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just like, when I heard about this, I'm like, that'd be so cool if they if he could do this. Mm -hmm. But then just seeing him not do that in the trailer kind of thinks it's not going to happen, mm -hmm. which I'm totally fine with. And then I still love that he's going to be a martial artist. Yes. Like a very skilled martial artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Aquafina is just there for the comedic relief. I feel it's just comedic relief in that and for her role, which I don't mind because like I do like a little comedic relief mm -hmm. in some of, especially with the Marvel movies. Like I don't mind it. I'm just really excited and seeing, and especially like with the Ten Rings part, like I'm trying to see like what those represent. I think I've seen like little parts where each ring represents like a well, I think power was, or something. Yeah, like each ring re represents a person that gave up that power or, okay. or that power that that person had just like combined into a ring. It's mm -hmm. a little confusing, but I think Mandarin is his dad. Yeah, it's really interesting they're referencing Mandarin back from Iron Man 3. Mm -hmm. So, like, really funny. Yeah, I, yeah and I, I think they've already stated that this Mandarin knows that that, like, Ben, ben Kingsman, I think that's his name, 
Ben Kingsley. Yeah, the Ben Kingsman Mandarin was trying to steal him, and he's not happy about it. Oh, yeah. So there's One... that. And I think the person in the mask, who mm-hmm. looks like the antagonist mm-hmm. throughout the most of the movie, is, from what I've heard, read, read on an article, it's his estranged sister. Really? So I'm very curious to see just how this movie's going to play out. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited for this movie to come out. I really hope this is going to turn out... Who did you say that? What what was the main actor's name again? Uh, Simu Liu. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. He was in a a sitcom, I think based in Canada, called Kim's Convenience. And that was a really nice, um, chill, like, show. I know I just heard that that show is now starting to end, which is really sad. um, Because I really, I just started watching it a couple months ago. And it was a nice, like, comedy relief video, um, show. Uh, he was a really good actor in that also. Yes. And he was really sad that he, that show is ending. But it's also a good way to, for him to transition from going into sitcoms and now becoming part of movies now. So so as soon as he was announced, like he just looked like a really cool guy. Followed him on Twitter. And of course, he did a retweet of a tweet that was back from... Was it? What, what year were you in? 21? Um, like 14 or 13 I think of I, him. Yeah. Him saying he wants to play Shang-Chi. Mm-hmm. Like he called this oh, years, years ago. ago. That. And then <laughs> and then for like a solid year or two, he advocated like, I want to do this. Like, mm-hmm. I think he even, um, correct me if I'm wrong, which you probably don't know, that he like made videos of him like doing martial arts. And I think he did. Yeah. Some, I think I did make some Just so he can too. promote it some more because he really wanted this role. So mm-hmm. it's badass. And I applaud myself to mm-hmm. Marvel for casting someone like this. Like yeah. he wanted this role. From the beginning, before I feel you like guys he, even wanted to, uh, wanted to create a Shang Chi movie. Yeah, I feel like he's made for this role, oh, and it looks like he is. Because I can't see any other actor that can replace him. Maybe I was thinking Henry Golding from Crazy Rich Asians. But yeah, I was like, thinking that. Too. I was like, but like the thing is, I feel, not to be mean. Um, he's got he, bad teeth. He got bad teeth, and he's a little bit too old, in my opinion. Yeah, he's like in his late thirties, right? I feel like a, I feel I don't know actually. He I'm could surprised be. Uh, Rachel Chu. What is her name? Constance Wu. Yeah, I'm surprised she's not in this movie. <laughs> Cause she, I don't know. I feel like she's too dramatic. Think Jimmy Woo will make an appearance? <laughs> so, no, he can't. I don't because... know. I'm just listing all the Asians. And <laughs> oh my god, you mean motherfucker! <laughs> well, they did put Aquafina in here. So. Okay, I mean, I could see maybe a Jimmy Woo appearance because maybe there might be something where. Because isn't it in the movie there was like that bus accident? Was that in mm-hmm. San Francisco? Yeah, it did look like it was in San Francisco so may- all the hills. Yeah, and I just remember from Ant-Man and the Wasp, that's where he was in San Francisco for that. So, and Venom. And Venom. So, like, it's a possibility. We hate Venom. Or, I really hate Venom. I, I don't like mind it. I don't like the Venom with, what's the actor? The new one that just released? Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. I loved the Topher Grace Venom from the old Spider-Man 3 movies. Stop talking. That was even worse. I Oh, God. That was a good childhood movie. I just well, learned this week, Sam Raimi didn't even want Venom in the movie. Really? He wanted Vulture to be the third villain in that movie. But the studio thought Venom would have been, like, sold more, people recognized more. So they pushed it, and that's what came into the movie. He pretty much just had to listen to the studio for what they wanted. Mm. So it would have been cool to see an intro, because Vulture's supposed to be old. Like, like a like really, really old, old guy. Mm-hmm. So I think it's funny that Michael Keaton, like... <laughs> From the homecoming? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's fitting. Other than that, do you have any other thoughts of Shane Chi? I don't know. I, all I can say, final thoughts on it. I'm really... Ex- again, I'm super excited for... Now they're having another Asian role um, now added into the Marvel Universe. I really hope they turn this movie turns out as best as they can. I have a feeling it's going to be similar to like what Black Panther is. So that's going to be a weird allegory, I guess, or a weird comparison. But like, especially, obviously, like I know bringing it back again with Asian hate going on right now. I feel like we need this some sort of win to like represent us. You know what I mean? Remember when Black Panther got nominated for Best Picture? Yeah, that I was, did. That was funny. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just nominate one superhero movie. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But yeah, I, I'm actually more excited than this than uh, Black Widow. Yeah. Black Widow, I'm sorry, but the hype's over. Because they had the chance I know, to I know, do they, it. I know, I know. To like release it and like it's now they're not releasing it until what, July 9th mm-hmm. or whatever? So I think they should have kept the May date. Yeah. I mean, it's Marvel. They're not going to lose money. Even if they do lose money, it's not going to be a hit. 
They're gonna they, just or just have them do the thing what they did with uh, Raya and with Mulan. Yeah, I'd pay thirty dollars. Just on pay Disney. the damn thirty. Who I'll cares? pay thirty dollars for Disney Plus to have it. I know, and that's but yeah, like I said, it's Disney, so they can afford to take a hit. It's not like it's Warner Bros. who is constantly getting losses or duds. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I think the next thing we want to talk about is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes, <laughs> our thoughts on that finale average finale average <laughs> so. i actually liked uh the wandavision finale a little better oh than i did also i freaking love it than better than uh last night yesterday's episode mm -hmm. which is a little disappointing i don't know for some reason it just doesn't feel like it's part of the mcu you feel like it's like a spinoff yeah and it just was a big meh i wouldn't call the whole the finale was a meh mm -hmm. the whole show as like i they had a lot of wholesome stuff mm -hmm. i really like that like I told you earlier, they gave Walker a bigger character development. Character development than Bucky and Sam. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't and don't get me wrong, like with Sam, how much character development can you give him? Yeah. I guess like now him becoming the new Captain America. Yeah, but then you, he was supposed to already know he was the Captain America this yeah. whole time. So mm -hmm. But at least Bucky, give mm -hmm. him better character development. Mm -hmm. Like, he told the Asian guy, the old man at the end. Yeah. I killed your the son. son. Yeah. Yeah. I, or I murdered your... Your son was murdered. I was the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. And that was that. He just Nothing, walked outside. And, but then, like, you see him walking past the restaurant where the, the old man and the daughter worked at. And then they just looked at each other and just, like... Yeah, off. I was expecting the old man to say, give him a wave in. Yeah. Or, like, do this and, like, or hopefully... Like, to him or something. Or, like, hi. I mean, the girl, like, did a little head nod. The or, girl he ditched. Yeah, which kind of sucked because I kind of like the seeing them together, but like, I don't know. I feel like I like also Bucky with Sarah. Yeah, we, <laughs> ship, we ship that. I was really expect like during the end when they're having like their their crawfish barbecue. Mm -hmm. I was really They're expecting happy him to go give a hug to Sarah, but it didn't happen. I, I kind of wanted that to happen. I just wanted it because it's a troll. Mm -hmm. It'd be funny, but then instead, like what we just see them like Bucky and Sam looking in the freaking ocean and smiling. And then they walk off, you know? I do like that as, like, the... I wondered how, what would be, like, the last scene to wrap it up. And I think the, like, barbecue with everyone mm -hmm. in Sam's hometown was... That was a good way that to end it. That was a nice it. way to end it. It was nice and wholesome. Yeah, bring back the wholesomeness that the, that I really liked about the show. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the Flag Smashers? The Flag Smashers, honestly... <laughs> in my, okay, so, like, I actually found a TikTok where they were talking about, like, how the Flag Smashers... They're kind of like alluding it to like what's going on today as like the people that represent all lives matter and all that stuff. So like I've been seeing I've been seeing that like they're kind of like correlating each other with it. They're just a very interesting group, and all I can think is like they just have to help one of them be a what? What was their quote? One world, one people, or something like that. Oh, like stupid. <laughs> it was stupid in my opinion. It was a nice like villainous thing to add into the storyline, but like and with Carly, it's just average in my opinion it's so so one-dimensional it is one-dimensional and yes. i feel like as powerful as a super serum mm -hmm. is you shouldn't have a bunch of random people be super soldiers or have that serum there was like, it was only given to like a couple people yeah right? i know but there's still at least like four or five of them mm -hmm. that had it and it was just what every superhero or like a good two or three of the avengers will build entirely because of <laughs> The super soldier serum, like Banner, Captain America, okay. um, Bucky had it at one, or got it too. And then so, John Walker just Yeah, and then got John it. Walker too. So it's so important. And then you're just going to have these randos. Carly's okay. I'm okay with Carly having it. Like she mm -hmm. was the biggest, or she was like the main one. So of course she's going to have it. But like the rest mm -hmm. of them, you just see them like nod and fight. And I just think that's just so dumb. I think what they should have done is had one main villain mm -hmm. that had the Flag Smashers as their group. Yeah. And then make that one main villain, not Carly, clearly, just have them focusing on that one person. Carly was awful. And mm -hmm. it was really weird to see her in the finale because the whole season she was like back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you even felt, she even felt sorry for killing Battle Starlight, right? Like, yeah. And then this episode, she took a 180. She just went like, oh, no, I hate everyone. I hate you, Sam, which is weird. Um, I killed Battlestar. He was worthless. Like, just he was useless. Yeah, I'm like, what the? 
I'm like, you cared about killing him, though, like yeah. two episodes ago. So why are you turning it into this? Just turning it into another one. Yeah, just to become more of a villain, which mm-hmm. you weren't at all throughout the whole series. So mm-hmm. it's just dumb. I don't know. The villain, this like whole weird plot with them was just kind of redundant. They could have done something better. They could have done it a lot better and made it work a lot better. But I guess we did learn more about the, the power broker. So the big, yeah, fucking Sharon. Yeah, it's now Sharon. Spoilers. Sorry. Um. <laughs> So that plot point or reveal <laughs> is so terrible. It was so dumb. <laughs> so terrible. Like, they didn't even try to make it a reveal. They mm-hmm. just... In episode three, you see the main episode that Sharon's in mm-hmm. is literally called Power Broker. Really? Yeah. Wait, you're kidding. Go back in Disney+. Plus. That's what it's called. And then you see her doing a bunch of shady shit, which, if you want to make it a bigger reveal, don't show her doing that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It was just dumb. It was dumb, and she just comes out of the corner. You could, you come, come work for me, Carly. This is stupid, stupid, it was so stupid. Dumb. I get, I get why you're going evil. Yeah, the government turned on you. Yeah, they fucked which, you over, which is fine. But don't make this reveal or whole like big plot point of her being the power broker without mm-hmm. it being dumb. She had like she was the worst character on the show. In it my was, opinion, it, it was dumb as hell. And then like at the end of the one day had that whole fight scene at the end. Where they capture Carly or Carly got injured and now they're taking her to hospital. And you see Sharon just being on the side and like looking injured and shit. And then like they don't even really figure out that she's actually the power broker. Like Sam and Bucky don't know that yet. Mm-hmm. So I guess that can be a nice future ep- future series or something involving that. And it's just, it was just weird how they set that up. They just need to abandon it in my opinion. They don't need to keep going with it. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, now, I don't know if you saw there was a post credit scene with that. Yeah, I didn't even waste my time. It was literally just her that the government forgives her. And now that she's um, being a part of back to her old sector or whatever she did previously. She made a shady phone she call. She made a shady phone call to someone that we're going to probably figure out soon enough that, yep, now I have access to all these government prototypes, gadgets, whatnot, secrets, whatever. So I guess that'll be a nice future thing to look into now. But Dumb. Don't make her a main villain. It's going to be weird and like, I don't feel I'm like... I'm okay uh, with her like switching sides. Mm-hmm. Just don't make her a villain like this. Like, I guess we're going to probably get more about her though. I know. I don't want it. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't set it up right. So mm-hmm. now it's just awkward. Mm-hmm. And I think from what I've heard, she is kind of like a back and forth between protagonist and antagonist mm-hmm. in the comics. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she does some like shady stuff in the comics too. Show more of an anti-hero. Mm-hmm. But unless there's a benefit to her doing this, I don't it's just know. weird. I just hope she thing. like reports to someone bigger who's more <laughs> of a threat. That's my hope. Like something in phase four. <laughs> yeah, I really want. I'm. Come on, you you, are, you can do way more better villains than Sharon Carter. <laughs> like say that out loud. Like yeah, Sharon there's a Carter. shit. There's like, a bunch more you can probably figure like, out. You like that doesn't sound threatening at all. Mm-hmm. Like Thanos. Whoa. Sharon Carter. No, it doesn't do anything for anything. But let's talk about the good parts of the episode. Yes. So. I want to start with the, the reveal of Falcon's new suit. That suit was sexy. I loved it. It was really cool just seeing um, the new look of it. He now has the shield, and he adds that stuff now to this bag and to include in his suit and shit. I, lo- I don't know if you've seen... I, yeah, you showed me. There was like a TikTok of someone... Showing, like, an allegory of why his suit is made like that. Yeah, why he has two stripes instead of three stripes. Mm-hmm. Which, Steve Rogers had three, three stripes. stripes in the Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. And it was just a nice, like, little um, metaphor to show that there. it was... I think, if I remember correctly... It's missing the third stripe because... It's to represent the missing, like, what, Steve, Steve Rogers, Yeah, like, right? honoring Steve. And mm-hmm. I guess that's what they do in the military, too, or... Mm-hmm. Um, in the Air Force, yes. when someone has fallen... Their formation Yeah, in their formation. The air. Someone flies off, and mm-hmm. then they continue that formation. Yeah. Which is a nice, like, little cool metaphor, and, like, it's good representation with that. So, it's really cool that they were able to incorporate that into a suit. It was really interesting to see people actually looking in depth of that, because I'm not sure if it was, like, really interpreted or looked into throughout the comics hmm. i'm not sure if the comics like kind of did that like, is where they adapted it from his suit was a very comic book accurate pretty much on the dot was it nice mm-hmm. and yeah his suit's awesome one thing i really i wish the action was better yeah like you're getting him in this new suit like don't get me like okay all the scenes with him with the shield oh, amazing was, i love that helicopter yeah. scene amazing which mm-hmm. we'll come back to for yeah. sure but like seeing him fight, um, 
I can't remember his name. The guy from Winter Soldier, the villain. Oh, that yeah. Was hired. Uh, the ball guy. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. He he didn't stand a chance. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was looking over and came and was like, why isn't he down already? Like, he should be kicking his ass hard. <laughs> and it was just like the action. The action in the Winter Soldier is, a lot I love it so much because every hit, every kick feels like it's, you can feel it because it's mm-hmm. so impactful. Mm-hmm. Nothing like this. And it was meh. The, yeah. That fight scene was just. I want the, the action two. to be like the Winter Soldier, where it's like every punch, every kick has meaning to it, and it's so impactful. Like if you miss one kick, you might get hurt. Like you might die. Yeah, yeah you you will really feel it. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, his suit's amazing. I think his wings are vibranium because he most likely they got it from Wakanda. Yeah, right. So it's a nice upgrade to him, which is a really nice benefit because now you have a, the wings that you won't break because that's what happened to him last time. And he gave the wings to Torres, his old ones, and didn't get to see Torres in the last. <laughs> I wish we re- wish we got that. I know because I know you you were telling me that you had a little theory that he would come back and yeah. like and fight, help fight with um, Falcon and Bucky and all that. Sadly, he was just chilling at his place. <laughs> I really didn't like the night setting. Yeah, the night parts were... In- it was kind of weird and, like, hard to, like, focus on. I think if you're going to have a big reveal with him in the suit in mm-hmm. Captain America, it should be during daytime, not at night. Well, I guess because now that his suit is white, it makes it a little bit of a difference. But, like, I guess it could, if it was in daylight, it would emphasize it more. Mm, I don't know. I'm seeing, like, stuff on Twitter of him in his suit, like, the dark background. It just looks funky. Yeah. It's off-putting. I guess I understand it from, like, an artist's perspective, like, contrasting it. But, like... I think it would have been better, like in sunlight or sunset or whatever, Morning. and then transitioning maybe into day into the nighttime. Or even dusk. Yeah, over dusk. Yeah, I don't know. What can you do? Yeah, the action sequences. Besides that fight, the rest of them are pretty cool. I love I, the the helicopter scene. helicopter scene. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead. Go. Off. I just fucking love how they like made that stuff. Like how they made they pretty much yeah they got captured in a helicopter. They went up. He literally called one of the people that were in there. To be like, can we coordinate with each other to, like, take over this and make sure mm-hmm. that you guys don't die? And, like, how he was able to infiltrate that thing and just do a weird barrel roll into the window and just k- grab the guy, go down into the ocean, and then have the girl, like, with a quick-ass reaction time, grab the stick and move it back. That was just fucking... That was the best part. My only favorite part throughout this whole finale. Mm-hmm. We get to have Ariel... Like, the aerial shield throws. Yes. So, him doing that barrel roll, throwing it, like, oh, I'm like, whoa, we've never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. Or how, um, one thing that also made me go, whoa, was when he caught that guy, and then he got on the bridge, and he used the shield and, and his the wings. wings to protect him. I was like, whoa. That's a that's another thing that just, I didn't think about. It, that that when, I, when they showed that, I was like, whoa, that's like... A really cool like way to protect yourself with both the wings and using the shield at the mm-hmm. same time. It's like it gives me like that little uh, metaphor like Steve is still there to protect you as well mm-hmm. throughout this whole um, journey. But I got mad Avengers vibe, the original Avengers, um, when he was like flying in. Uh-huh. He's like, I'm on my way. And then you see like the thruster like in the sky uh-huh. over the bridge. And I'm like, this this ha- this reminded me of when Tony is like, oh, I see a nuke coming in. Mm-hmm. And then it's like a similar shot of him flying by. And mm-hmm. I was like, wow. I'm like, he's in his new suit. It kind of reminds me of Iron Man. Yeah. He, he does give me Iron Man vibes also. Because there was that other part where there was the truck that had some of the GRC people. And they were going to fall off. But then Falcon came to save it. And he used those uh, thrusters and like other things that mm-hmm. was built into his suit. To like clamp on and help him boost it up. And that reminded me of what Iron Man did during Spider Man Homecoming, Mm -hmm. where it was using those same thrusters to help boost him up to like not have those people die essentially. Mm -hmm. So it it does give me like Iron Man vibes, which is a nice allegory. So it makes sense. I don't like that it gives me Iron Man vibes Mm because he's supposed to be his his own own hero. Yeah. But it makes sense because he's not a super. He doesn't have the super serum. He doesn't have so, anything. Super, he just has the suit. He has the wing. So I. So it makes sense. I just don't know how, how much I love it. Mm. What do you think about Walker and like his redemption? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I like it because those show he still cares mm-hmm. and like he wants to be at least at, not at the level of Steve Rogers or Captain not America. Anymore. No, he just wants to be there to help protect it. Like 
yes. people, I guess. When he, that decision whether they go after Carly or save the GRC people, mm -hmm. I feel like that should have been Sam's decision mm -hmm. to really make his Captain America vibe, vibe come out. Yeah. He, he should have had a decision like that, a big enough one. Mm -hmm. But I'm okay with Walker having it because you got to see like, oh, wait, this is just a lost... A guy who's lost everything yeah lost everything or well, not everything lost his best friend mm -hmm. and his role as captain america yeah his role as captain america what he um had pretty much his military status mm -hmm. he's destroyed and you see him still come out like i still need to do the right thing like yeah my selfish needs are not um not going to overcome these people's lives mm -hmm. so i really like that i thought that was a great addition it was because it shows like i said you're still and you still get more character development from him yeah rather than i mean I, you obviously you still get your character development from uh bucky and sam but like you get a little bit more from john walker mm -hmm. and like especially now that once the whole thing ended and he got a new suit <sighs> <laughs> I love his new suit. It's like now blacked out, so it gives it more like a badass type of vibe. Mm -hmm. with him. Yeah, he's definitely going to be underground, mm -hmm. like an anti-hero for sure. Mm -hmm. When I first saw his suit as Captain America, like I compared it to the comic book suit, and I was like, no, this isn't the same mm -hmm. because the comic book suit's black, but he has like bands on his shoulders. I think I saw that, that covers yeah. up his stripes. Mm -hmm. But with this new suit, he doesn't have that. Really? Yeah, I don't know if you got it. It's kind. Of, they didn't really give a good look, but. Yeah, because then they like called weird. him. She's like, "Oh, we don't need a you don't we don't need Captain America. Okay. We, need we need the a US, U.S. agent." <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it, Val. I heard she's gonna be in multiple things. You think so? Yeah, I think huh. the actress already said. I think she might even be in Black Widow. Really? Yep. So I think she said she's definitely gonna be around for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just hope we get to see more of U.S. agent. That'll um, be really nice because, like, I, he is a really good actor. I love. How, what he's been what he was Wyatt able to portray Wyatt Russell he was able to portray that role and like make a lot of people hate him but like in a good way so like I don't you, know I don't know if the fandom likes him now or not why? I haven't checked well because of the redemption I haven't been on I haven't checked Twitter or anything like that so I don't know how the reaction is to his redemption or not I like him I, I still like him as an actor I still like the character he was able to portray throughout this series you know like what can you do this mm -hmm. is how he was supposed to do this stuff. I just love how he made his soda can Captain America shield yeah that was kind of weird like and li you literally see it break in like a couple of seconds I know, it's <laughs> hilarious and then I I wondered where that medal, his medal of honor, or what is it? I don't know what it is. Some thing he got from yeah, the government. Yeah, I was wondering where that was. I thought that was going to be on the front of his shield, but mm -hmm. to kind of see it on the back to, to make him, like, look at remember it. Mm -hmm. or, like, say something to him, I thought that was kind of cool. That was a nice, like, because it, like, gives you, like, that little glimpse of hope, like, this is why I did this for. Mm -hmm. You like, why is he looking at it as he's, like, trying to push back? I forgot what he was doing with it when that scene happened. He was trying to, he looked at it. And was like, oh shit, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm doing it. So he just fucking pushed that shit out. Bucky was practically useless during the all <laughs> finale. Again, the, the show is called Captain America, America now. now. I <laughs> love that little nod at the end. Captain America. Yeah, I, I, I looked at Kame and she goes, what? I'm like, it says Captain America. And the Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. She like, oh, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> I'm like, hell yeah. That I was a good, that. that was a good like little change in it just to see like yeah he's not the falcon anymore he's now captain mm -hmm. america which is freaking dope as hell that they did that but anyways yeah bucky <laughs> just useless he just, just standing there. he lost fights and then i don't even think he won a fight i don't think so yeah, cause <laughs> then the truck came down and, and then, then they gave him a call like how do you how do you make the other main character like clearly the main character is falcon sam but how do you make the other character just useless? Just during... be there in the sidelines, essentially? Yeah. And, like, you have the whole show of them always fighting together. Mm -hmm. Not fighting apart, not doing their own thing, fighting together. And then yeah. why on earth do you have the finale of them fighting... Separate. He was with freaking... So separate. He was with um, Walker. Yeah. Why? They, were, they separated. Because I know during that whole divergence thing where Carly had to go one way and, like, the other people from the flag smashes went another direction that's when they separated where um sam went in one direction to go find carly and then you see walker and bucky go in the other direction and then all they did was literally just um made a d a, yeah a he, b like, line a little pat on the shoulder like come on yeah, yeah. yeah. and then like freaking walker says that line from um lincoln i think yeah about that and then that's all they did it was just so yeah and then the cops caught him and i was the, like wow that was so stupid no like i would have loved another fight scene between those like with using 
with Walker, with Bucky, yeah, and with the other people that they infiltrated. I was hoping for another fight between with Bucky and Walker, kind of back to back. That was dope as hell. Smashers, like kind of working a little together, but not really. Mm -hmm. So that that <sighs> that would have been amazing. And seeing that between the two, and like you can see that they would be able to work together. That will be another fucking character development moment. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, seeing. seeing Seeing Bucky put aside. Exactly. Because we all know Bucky hated it more than Falcon mm -hmm. or Sam. Yeah, that was rough. Um, Zemo got the last laugh. I love that part. Did you recognize who that old man was? I couldn't remember it, but I know he worked with Zemo. Yeah, but his butler. The butler from the airplane, right? Yeah. Oh my god. That hit me instantly. I'm like, I'm like, who is that guy? And I was like, wait, I think that's the butler. And then the next shot was Zemo in the jail. I was like, got it right. Freaking Zemo, I love him. Like, getting that last laugh. I really was sad that we didn't... I mean, that was I, a funny thing to get that. I told you he wasn't going to come back. Yeah. But then he did a tiny yeah, bit. Yeah, he got the last laugh. So, it was a nice little thing to mention that, yeah, Zemo's still there to fuck you up, you know? <laughs> Let's talk about one of the biggest parts of the episode. Isaiah Bradley. Yeah, that was a good... I loved this, the talk between the two. Is that the part that made you tear up? That did. Yeah. Oh, with the god. statue. The sad. Oh my yeah. god. It was a good it mention. Was, as soon as they walk into the museum, I'm like, oh boy. Sam gave him a part in the museum. That's some that's some heartwarming shit. It was very heartwarming. Because like this show is that Isaiah Bradley did had to help out, you know? Like he went through so much. He they were they what tortured him essentially to yeah, like experimented get, on him. Experimented on him and stuff and like went through everything and didn't get any mention at no all. No recognition. No. And then he got to he went to jail. He got the worst thing that could happen to him. Yeah. Punished for what he was doing, what he thought was the right thing. Oh. Which was the right thing, not what thought what he thought. But yeah, it was I told you. So I predicted like I really wanted Isaiah Bradley to come into like To fight. fight or not even <laughs> fight. Just to show up. Yeah. Because I think uh having Sam being Captain America and to have Isaiah Bradley have the views he has mm -hmm. I want Sam to be so impactful that he changes someone's views like mm -hmm. that. And he did. Kind he did. Of, with the amazing monologue. The monologue scene. during, yeah. So that's the best part of the show. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably one of the one of the better scenes out of the entire MCU. You think so? Yeah. I, think I that. get it. Yeah. Like, it shows that, because this also is like an out, another showing of like Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. essentially, you know. And like, he was trying to confront the the head of the GRC people that they're saying like you don't understand what it's like boy like <laughs> and I love what he said it was like I am a black man wearing the stars and stripes and then I just thought of Iron Patriot yeah from Iron Man 3 uh, Brody Brody and, and <laughs> stripes stars and stripes like you they suffered I mean they went through so much they don't understand it that was so stupid and I just that monologue that he did just top it up i can't i can't remember what he specifically said but like i think the dialogue was a little weird mm -hmm. for the monologue but i think it was still impactful yeah it I, still I showed that he cared and like that there needs to be got, change he never got a monologue like that from steve no so i thought that was pretty cool i feel like I think, steve's monologues are more like we're gonna do this we're gonna fight we're gonna mm -hmm. win very brave and courageous yeah <laughs> sam is like more logical logical more people friendly and more like this needs to be done i guess if that makes mm -hmm. sense all right. Do you have any other thoughts? Oh, so, sure. final thoughts. It was, I did love how it was a nice, um, brotherhood between Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Well, now I can say it, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. It was a nice way to bring them two together and have them talk. I really wish we got more of it, though. I did want more. I guess it. I mean, each episode was like what forty-five, fifty minutes yeah. long. I guess so. We did get like what three thousand. 300 minutes of it, worth of it, I guess. We got a lot of time, but it just doesn't seem like we're very much ahead. Do you think they could have elongated it more? I don't know. I just think they needed more character interaction. Mm -hmm. It was more heavy on the story versus like character development and interaction. Stuff yeah. just kept happening. Like I said in the last episode, mm -hmm. stuff just kept happening to them over and over. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I, I liked it. What would you say? What would you give a rating on it? I'd probably rate it at a... Probably at a 7 out of 10. I think that's where I said too. I yeah. A solid 7. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if this was the first show of Disney+, Plus, people would be a little worried. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. I, I really... I was so excited for this show. Yeah. It really was. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just... Not as pumped anymore as I... No, now they're making a Captain America 4. Yeah. They Did just, you hear about they that? They just um, talked about it. They and... better have 
better action in this. They better. It has to be. I wonder what this, that's probably what the storyline is going to be about Sharon Carter. No, don't bring her back. I, I'm sorry, but that's what it's going to be. Give him a new villain, please. Who Bucky, would be the new villain? Bucky though? doesn't even need to be in this movie. Well, I mean, Bucky can be in it a little bit, but <laughs> like, give this whole movie to Sam. I want that. Just I a Sam a movie. Full on Winter Soldier type movie. Mm. We're just a nonstop action and mm. so intense. All right, guys, those are our final thoughts of Falcon the Winter Soldier. Um, and then a little bit of the movie news. Do you have anything else you might want to add, Kyle? Falcon the Winter Soldier was a good show. Could have been better on certain aspects. Um, I still liked it. It was still a good show. Don't get me wrong. Wonderful show. Wonderful character development. Wonderful interactions. Obviously can improve on stuff. I guess it was pretty hard to also follow up with WandaVision. Because, like, yeah, we love Wanda. WandaVision just, like, made it better. And, like... It was really hard for Falcon and the Winter Soldier to, like, keep up with that pace. Because, mm-hmm. like, I, I know from WandaVision, people kept theorizing about a sh- bunch of things that could have that happened. Obviously, super excited for Shang-Chi. Mm-hmm. I really hope this movie turns out as it can be. And, yeah. You can listen to us on Spotify, YouTube. Please ask us questions. We would love to have some topics that you want us to talk about. Mm-hmm. You can reach us out Twitter or like private message, whatnot. But other than that, um, I'm going on vacation in the next couple of weeks, so <laughs> it might be a little dry podcast. But our next one, we're doing our top 10 favorite Marvel movies. Yes. So that's going to be a big one. Yes, you're going to love it. We're huge Marvel fans. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Have All a right. good one. See ya.